do it. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Product Phoenix Media. So this is a very cool video. I wanted to do it for a long time, but I just never got around to doing it. And here we are today. So we're gonna talk about a pretty cool project. I knew about it for many months now. Never got a chance to do it until recently. And this is the MX4SIO. I think that's how you pronounce the project name. There's a better way to pronounce it. Leave a comment in the YouTube section to let me know. Basically what you do is you have like a PS2 or PS1 memory card, your schematics online. You gotta take it apart. You gotta do some soldering. You gotta desolder some chips off the circuit board. So you have a nice flat smooth surface to add like an SD card adapter like in this particular example so I could use like a micro SD and the whole premise here is basically using a specific, a specific version of OPL excuse me you can actually load PS2 games directly off a of memory card slot 2 it's faster than using USB and I think it's a pretty cool it's a pretty cool project I think it's awesome but, there's a big but, you gotta know how to do some soldering. So either learn how to do soldering, or find somebody to do it for you. And, you gotta have a memory card you gotta you know, use as a donor. I had a cheap old memory card. This is my second attempt. I'll talk about my first attempt, the failed attempt, and some things that I learned during the process. I watched a lot of videos online about MX4SIO. I couldn't find anything in English, really. Um, so I'm very, very glad and very happy to um, present this video. Uh, to you guys and share some tips and tricks that I learned along the way that other videos that I was watching uh, didn't really teach me so I sort of taught myself so to speak as I went along on this fantastic PS2 MX4 SIO journey okay so here's my memory card I took the screws out ahead of time and what we got here is and I'll have a schematic online that I show that I, that I use Technically, you're supposed to use a 47 ohm resistor. I didn't have one, so I used two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. And I actually used some jumper wires instead to go straight to the contacts on the memory card rather than solder resistors direct. I had a concern of lifting off the pad, so that's why I did what I did here. But if you are a pro person that likes to solder, or maybe you want to get rid of this whole SD card and use like, like a mini micro SD card uh, holder, by all means, go ahead and do it. I think that's pretty cool too. Or if you use like an SMD, you know, those little, um, what do you call it, like resistors. That's not not this style, but like the chip resistors, basically. Uh, that will make your project even cooler and, and more compact. I didn't have any of that stuff, so I'm going old school. This worked out well for me. And then, of course, for the memory card shell itself, you're going to have to cut the ends. So I, I cut a slot. It's pretty, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not the best, but it, it does the job. So I took an exacto knife, tried to do my best. I might file it down with a, a file later on. And then I did the same thing on this other part of the shell right here. I sort of cut the ends right here. And then something that I other videos did not say, so I sort of did it myself, is you notice that I cut like these three sections here. It used to be plastic here. I cut that out. The reason the reason I did that is when you put the memory card together, you put the shell together. I was afraid or concerned that I might um, have that plastic part accidentally uh, squeeze on the wires. So I didn't want to do that. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I put this back together, and like I said, I'll have, I'll have a picture I'll show you guys in the video of the schematic that I used. And I think, yep, this slides together like so. So you can sort of see in here, that if there was a plastic piece, it'll sort of squeeze down on the wires. I didn't want that. So that's why I cut that out, basically. And this is what it looks like on the end. Like I said, it's, it's not the cleanest, it's not the best, but it does the job. I'm, I'm satisfied with it. This is my second attempt, and it worked out well. My first attempt, basically, I had this very generic PS1 memory card. You can also use a PS2 memory card if you wish. I didn't want to tear up a good Sony memory card, so I used a generic PS1 memory card. And uh, you don't need the whole circuit board. You can actually cut it in half if you wanted to. But this one I messed up because I accidentally lifted off the, the wires and lifted off the pads. I could not salvage this memory card. So it's pretty much junk. The other memory card here, um, there was like one or two microchips on the circuit board. I had to desolder in order to have enough room inside the memory card shell basically to have this micro SD card adapter sit perfectly well inside the, the shell here. 
So that's pretty much it. And then the second item is, of course, is you're gonna need a special version of OPL that allows the memory card to work. So I'll talk about that as the video continues. And then also this only works in, in memory card slot two. So that's another key criteria. And then I also found a version of OPL that allows you to you save your games so it works with your memory card, the, your regular memory card is slot one. In later versions of OPL, they have something called a BDM or a block device manager. I think it's called a driver that allows your memory card to work in slot two, but it doesn't allow you to save your games. I don't know why, but that's just the way it is. So I'll show you what OPL version that I use to make it work. Okay, so let's go back and get my controller here. I have a Bluetooth adapter, so use my trusty PS5 controller. Anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to OPL, and I'll go to the About section, I'll show you the exact same version that I use. I have a link in the video description, and I'll use the exact same version. And this is the one that worked out well for me. So if I press Start, if I go to About, it's the 110 Beta 1629. So that's worked out well, it allows you to save your game files, which is great. And under settings, I have the USB device mode set to auto. You can also use manual. In later versions or newer versions of OPL, um, later builds, this will probably say BDM. And you can say auto or manual, and you have another sub, sub menu that says like MX4 SIO. You know, those that OPL builds work fine, but the problem I found out rather quickly is um, some games either don't work and or most importantly to me, I could not save my game files into to memory card slot one, which is pretty important to me. So, so that's why I'm using this particular version. Another pro tip I have for you guys is Marvel vs. Capcom 2 as an example. When I first tested this game, it was a black screen. It, did, it didn't run at all. I don't know why. So someone gave me a pro tip. We're doing some research online. If you go to triangle and go to configure pad emu, go ahead and enable it. Even though we're not using it, technically speaking, for whatever reason, it fixes my game, it gets past the loading screen, and the game works great. So, this says I have it set per, per game. I suppose I could have it as global, but I have it as per game right now. This says on, DualShock 3 slash 4 USB, off 1, 1P, off and on. So go to OK, save your changes, and then go ahead, run the game. So this is literally running the game, off the memory card, slot two, that's on my micro SD. It's like a class 10, eight gigabyte card I have for testing purposes. I'm not sure how high you can go, it's like one terabyte. So if you guys know, leave a comment in the YouTube section, help everyone out. But it's much faster than USB, that's for sure. And in my limited testing so far, um, the games work great, the audio works great, the videos work great, I haven't noticed any lag. So I think it's a pretty cool project. Um, what else can I say? Oh, so the save load just to show proof that this the saving does work. So if I go to save, if I click on save on slot one, it's gonna say yes, or it's gonna say save successful. If I had a newer version of OPL that had the BDM driver, if I try to save, it won't save. So that's why I'm using this particular version. Okay, uh, what else? And let's just do a quick gameplay. Turn up the audio a little bit here in a second. So I will say that the toughest the toughest part of the project is you gotta do some soldering. So take your time with the soldering. Of course you're gonna need a donor memory card, PS1 or PS2 memory card. Take your time and also make sure you have resistors, right? To do that part of the project. And then also get the OPL. But that's that's easy enough. I think the hardest part is just doing the memory card modification itself. And I'm in the USA. If, I, if time permits, I might make a little bit more on the side. And if anyone's interested in buying some, uh, let me know. We might be able to work out a deal. But if not, that's okay too. Um, it's a cool project. I learned a lot. Um, I watched a lot of videos, so I want to give credit to all those videos I watched online in Brazilian, Portuguese, Spanish, um, Japanese, Korean, whatever. You know, there's a lot of videos online, but I, did, I had a hard time finding. Some English videos, I'm very honored to uh, at least do my own attempt in making an English video on this particular PS2 project. I hope it gets better over time. This is just the beginning. The PS2 community is huge. 
There's a lot of developers still, there's a lot of modders still, and I'm very happy to be able to participate and make a video on such a cool project. So anyways, that's today's video. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, don't comment here on YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.